Hi fifth graders, welcome to lesson 7.7, .7, Area and Mixed Numbers. The essential question for this lesson is, how can you use a unit tile to find the area of a rectangle with fractional side lengths? Now go ahead and open up in your GoMath workbooks to lesson 7.7, .7, found on page 157, and let's get started. Now let's take a look at question number three. The directions say to use an area model to solve. For question three, they give us the mixed number one and one eighth, times the mixed number two and one half. Now there are certain steps we're going to follow here to help us solve this problem. Step number one is going to be this. We're going to rewrite each mixed number, so one and one eighth and two and one half, as the sum of a whole number and a fraction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one and one eighth and I'm going to rewrite that as the whole number one plus the fraction one eighth. And I'm also going to take two and one half and I'm going to rewrite that as the whole number two plus the fraction one half. Now, once we have those rewritten, step number two is going to be this. We're now going to draw an area model and label each section to show how we broke apart the mixed numbers. So we're going to go ahead and with that area model, we're going to draw a rectangle. So I want you to go ahead and draw a rectangle with me. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to draw the rectangle. So here is our area model. Now, we're going to break it apart and label the sections to show how we broke apart those mixed numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw a line here, just like that. And I'm going to let this top side of my rectangle right here represent our 2 and 1 half. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to write down the 2 here plus the fraction 1 half here. Now, I'm going to break apart the rectangle going this way as well. So we're going to go ahead and just draw another dotted line here. And I'm going to let this side of our rectangle represent our 1 and 1 eighth. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to write down this part as the 1 plus the fraction 1 eighth. Now, our next step, is, next step is going to be this. We now have to find the area of each section. So what we're going to do is this. I'm going to find the area of this rectangle right here. And I know that I'm going to multiply the 2 times the 1. So we're going to go ahead and write that down. So we're going to say 2 times 1. And I know that 2 times 1 is going to give me 2. So we now have our first area. Now we have to find the area of this section right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this 1 by the 1 half. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down. And I know that the whole number 1 times the fraction 1 half is going to give us 1 half. So I'm going to go ahead and circle that 1 half, and we now have the area of section number 2. Now we have to find the area of this section right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my fraction 1 eighth, and I'm going to multiply it by the whole number 2. So we're going to go ahead and write that down. We have 1 eighth, and we're going to multiply that by the whole number 2. Now, I know that 2 times 1 is going to give me 2, so I'm going to go ahead and make 2 my numerator, and 8 is going to be my denominator. So the area, when I multiply 1 8 times 2, is going to give me the fraction 2 8 So we're going to go ahead and circle that, and we have our next area. Now we have to find the area of this last section right here. So what we're going to do is we're now going to multiply this fraction 1 8 times the fraction 1 half. So we'll go ahead and write that down. We have 1 8 times 1 half. Now remember, it's numerator times numerator, so 1 times 1 is going to give us 1. And then it's denominator times the denominator, and 8 times 2 is going to give us 16. So we now have the area of that last section. Now our last step is to add all of those areas together. So we're going to add the 2 and the 1 half and the 2 eighths and the 1 sixteenths together. So I'm going to start out by writing down the fraction numbers first. I have the 1 half. I have the 2 eighths. And then we also have the 1 16th. Now, if we want to add these fractions together, the problem is they don't have a common denominator. So I'm looking at a 2, an 8, and a 16. And what I know is, I know that 16 would make a great common denominator because 16 is a multiple of the 2, the 8, and the 16. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to write down 16 as my common denominator. So we're going to go ahead and make our equivalent fractions here, all of them having a denominator of 16. So let's go ahead and take that step. Now, I know that 2 times 8 is going to give me 16. So 1 times 8 is going to give me 8. So I'm going to go ahead and make that equivalent fraction 8 sixteenths. 
I also know that 8 times 2 is going to give me 16, so 2 times 2 would give me 4. So our next equivalent fraction is 4 sixteenths. Now what's nice about this last fraction is it already has a denominator of 16, so we're going to leave that as 1 16th. And now it's okay to go ahead and add those fractions together. I know that 8 plus 4 is going to give me 12, plus 1 more is going to give me 13. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to write down 13 sixteenths as my fraction. Now I can't forget, I still had the whole number 2 over here as one of my areas. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add the 2 to the 13 sixteenths. And when I do that, my answer turns out to be 2 and 13 sixteenths. And we now have used the area model to help us solve the problem 1 and 1 eighths times 2 and 1 half. Now let's take a look at question number six. It's one of our real world problem solving questions and it says Ava's bedroom rug is two and three fourths feet long and two and a half feet wide. What is the area of the rug? So what we know is this. We know that Ava's rug is two and three fourths feet long and it's two and a half feet wide and our job is to find the area of the rug. Well, we know that in order to find area we have to multiply the length times the width. So we're going to multiply 2 and 3 fourths, so we'll go ahead and write that down, 2 and 3 fourths times our 2 and 1 half. Now once again, let's first of all break apart or rewrite each mixed number as the sum of a whole number and a fraction. So we're going to take that 2 and 3 fourths and we'll rewrite that as 2 plus the fraction 3 fourths. And we'll also take our 2 and 1 half and rewrite that as 2 plus the fraction 1 half. Now our next step is going to be to draw an area model and label each section to show how we broke apart the mixed numbers. So let's go ahead and draw our rectangle together. So out here to the side I'm going to go ahead and draw our rectangle and I want you guys to go ahead and draw a rectangle with me as well. So here's our rectangle and I'm going to go ahead and break our rectangle apart so we're going to use the dotted or the dashed lines here and then also here as well. Now what we know is this. We know that the rug is two and three fourths feet long and it's two and a half feet wide. So we'll go ahead and represent the length here with our two and three fourths. So we'll go ahead and we're going to write down our two and the three fourths. So here's two plus the three fourths to represent the length. And then we'll also represent the two and one half feet as the width. So here's our two plus our one half. Now our next step is to find the area of each section. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start with this section right here and we're going to work to find the area. Well, in order to do that we have to multiply the 2 times the 2. So in this part of the rectangle we're going to write down 2 times 2 and I know that 2 times 2 is going to give us 4. So we have our first area. Now we'll find the area of this section right here. And in order to do that we have to multiply the whole number 2 times the fraction 3 fourths. So we'll go ahead and write down 2 times 3 fourths. Now what I know is 2 times 3 is going to give me 6, so 6 becomes my numerator and the 4 will still be my denominator. So the area here turns out to be 6 fourths. Now let's focus on finding the area of this section right here. I've got to multiply the fraction 1 half times the whole number 2. So we'll write down 1 half times 2. And what I know is 1 times 2 is going to give me 2, so my numerator is a 2, and my denominator is also a 2. Well, I know that if I end up with 2 over 2, that actually equals the whole number 1. So the area of that section is going to be the whole number 1. Now we have to find the area of this last section right here. And in order to do that, we have to multiply the fraction 1 half times the fraction 3 fourths. So we'll go ahead and write down 1 half times 3 fourths. Now remember, it's numerator times numerator, so we're going to multiply 1 times 3, and 1 times 3 is going to give us 3 as our numerator, and then we multiply the 2 times the 4, and 2 times 4 is 8, so 8 becomes our denominator. So we now have that fourth area. Now our last step is to add the areas together. I'm going to start with the two fraction parts. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to add 6 fourths plus 3 eighths. So out here over to the side, I'm going to go ahead and write down my 6 fourths, and to that I have to add my 3 eighths. Now what I notice is my fractions at this time do not have a common denominator. 
Well, what I know is if I have both a 4 and an 8, I want my common denominator to be an 8 because 8 is a multiple of both 4 and 8. So we're going to go ahead and create those equivalent fractions. And what I know is 4 times 2 is going to give me 8, so 6 times 2 would give me 12. So I'm going to go ahead and write 12 down as my numerator. Now, with that second fraction, my denominator is already an 8, so I'm going to leave that 3 alone, and we're going to go ahead and bring that across, and we're still going to have 3 eighths. Now, when I add 12 plus 3, that's going to give me 15. So I end up with 15 eighths as my sum. Now, I can't forget, I still have two whole number areas here. I have a 4 and a 1. Well, I know that 4 plus 1 is going to give me 5, and when I add 5 to 15 eighths, that gives me 5 and 15 eighths. Now, the problem is 15 eighths is an improper fraction. Well, I know that 8 goes into 15 one whole time, so we're going to turn that 5 into a 6. We're going to bump it up to a 6, and I know that 15 minus 8 leaves me with 7, so my numerator is going to be a 7, and once again, my denominator stays the same. It's still going to be an 8. So what I know is the area of our rug is 6 and 7 eighths feet. So we're going to go ahead and circle that, and we have our final answer. Now, let's take a look at question number seven. It's another one of our real-world problem-solving questions, and it says, a painting is two and two-thirds feet long and one and a half feet high. What is the area of the painting? So what we know is this. A painting is two and two-thirds feet long, and it's one and one-half feet high, and our job is to find the area. Now remember, area is length times width, so we're going to multiply two and two-thirds times the one and one-half. So we'll go ahead and write that down. So we have our two and two-thirds times our one and one-half. Now remember, step number one says, rewrite each mixed number as the sum of a whole number and a fraction. So I'm going to make two and two-thirds into two plus the fraction two-thirds, and I'm going to rewrite one and one-half as one plus the one-half. Now, step number two is, or says, draw an area model and label each section to show how we break apart or broke apart the mixed numbers. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to draw a rectangle to represent our painting. So let's go ahead and draw the painting here. So here's our rectangle, and I want you guys to go ahead and draw the rectangle with me as well. So we now have our rectangle. And what we're going to do is, if we know that our rectangle is two and two-thirds feet long. So we'll let this side represent the length. And I know that I have to break it apart, once again, using those dotted lines. So we're going to go ahead and we'll say that our top part, the length, we're going to break that into the whole number 2 plus the fraction 2 thirds. So there's the length. And now we have to represent the height, and we know that it's 1 and 1 half feet high. So let's go ahead and break apart the rectangle here. So I'm going to go ahead and draw the dotted line. So here's our dotted line. And now we'll go ahead and get those numbers written in. So once again, this is going to represent the height. It'll be 1 and 1 half. So we're going to write down the 1 here plus the fraction 1 half. Now our next step is to find the area of each section. So let's start out with this section right here. And I know that to find the area of that section, I have to multiply the whole number 1 times the whole number 2. So we'll go ahead and write that down. So we're going to find 1 times 2, so the area there will be the whole number 2. Now let's find the area of this section right here. And in order to find the area, we have to multiply the whole number 1 times the fraction 2 thirds. Well, I know that if I multiply 1 times 2 thirds, I know that my answer is still going to be 2 thirds. So we have the area of the second section. Now to find the area of this section right here, we have to multiply the whole number 2 times the fraction 1 half. So we're going to go ahead and write down 1 half times 2. Now what I know is this. 2 times 1 is 2, so we're going to make our numerator a 2, and our denominator is still going to be a 2 as well. Now if I have 2 over 2, I know that that equals the whole number 1. So our area here is a 1. Now to find the area of the last section, we have to multiply the fraction 1 half by the fraction 2 thirds. So we'll go ahead and write down 1 half times two-thirds. Now remember, numerator times numerator, so one times two is going to give us two, and then we also have to multiply, so we have our two, now we have to multiply the denominator times the denominator, and two times three is going to give us six. So we have an area of two-sixths. 
Now our last step is to add those areas together. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start with the fraction parts first. So I'm going to add 2 thirds plus 2 sixths. So we'll go ahead and write down 2 thirds plus 2 sixths. Now the problem is they don't have a common denominator, but if I have a 3 and I have a 6, I know that I want my common denominator to be a 6. And I know that 3 times 2 is going to give me 6, so 2 times 2 is going to give me 4. And I know that 2, 6 can stay the same because it already has a denominator of 6. Now, when I add those two fractions together, 4 plus 2 is going to give me 6, so 6 is my numerator, and 6 is also my denominator. And I know that when my numerator and my denominator are the same number, that becomes the whole number 1. So I end up with a 1 here. Now I can't forget, I still have to add in the whole number 2 and the whole number 1 as well. Well, 2 plus 1 is 3, plus this one right here is going to be 4. So I know that the area of this painting is going to turn out to be 4 feet squared. Now your homework for tonight will be to complete question number 1 and question number 2, as well as numbers 3 through 6 found on page 158. Don't forget, somewhere on your homework page, I want you to assess yourself. Do you feel like you're number one, a novice, number two, an apprentice, number three, a practitioner, or number four, an expert? Don't forget, your homework for tonight is to complete question number one and question number two, as well as numbers three through six found in your Go Math workbook on page 158. We hope you have a great evening, and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow at school.